Hi, I'm Amy Wolf with ViewCast. We start with exciting medical news and the fight against diabetes. Vanderbilt University Medical Center is one of the first hospitals in the nation to study a new drug that may prevent type 1 diabetes. The study was so compelling to one girl, she traveled across the country to participate. As ViewCast Carol Bartu tells us, she was driven by hope and love for her sister. Kirby Bennett and her sister are very close. We're identical twins. I guess we're closer than other people. It's like we've both been blondes, but at different times, and you know, so rarely do we have the same hair color. Now we do. But then, Kirby's sister was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. So it does make us different. It's difficult to um, do the same things that we used to do because she always has to stop and check her blood sugar, stop and make sure that she can make sure her pump, her insulin pump is working because she has a pump now. That's when 19-year-old Kirby decided to take a blood test to determine her own risk for developing type 1 diabetes. So it's a gradual progression. So cell death isn't just like snap your fingers and you're diabetic. Um, uh, beta cell death happens over time. Um, and so it, and it slowly impairs your ability to process glucose. So I'm on that path. With two markers in her blood for high risk, a twin with the disease, and blood sugar levels sometimes a bit out of the normal range, Kirby may have a better than 80% risk of developing type 1 diabetes within two years. That risk brought her all the way to Vanderbilt University Medical Center from her home in Los Angeles, California. She's participating in a new study okay. she hopes may prevent her type 1 diabetes from ever developing. Kirby receives two-hour infusions every day for two weeks. It's part of a study of an experimental drug called anti-CD3. TrialNet researcher Dr. Tom Thomas says anti-CD3 targets powerful killer cells called T cells in our immune system. These are the cells that have turned on Kirby and are waging war against her own insulin producing cells. So in this whole big group of very good cells, there's some bad players uh, and those are the ones that I call the misbehaving uh, T cells. And in, in the best bet, we'd like to get rid of them and replace them with some better players. The hope is that anti-CD3 could knock back or even kill off the misguided cells in Kirby's immune system, leaving her immunity stunned for a bit. And that may give her own insulin producing cells a chance to recover. This allows her immune system to reconstitute itself and much like you would reboot the computer uh, uh, with the plan that we would be replacing these misbehaving T cells with those that have a more normal behavior and in doing this will limit the destruction of uh, her beta cells. Hopes are high that for the first time instead of treating it, anti-CD3 might bring people like Kirby back from the brink of type 1 diabetes. It's exciting to be a part of it. I really do support medical research a lot. I feel like everything has been really um, done very well and, and that we can you know, good, find good results from this study. Whether or not it does something for me, it is definitely going to be really important in um, learning more about, about preventing diabetes and possibly curing diabetes for the future and, you know, for my sister. For ViewCast, I'm Carol Bartu. The day Kirby began the anti-CD3 study, she and one other young patient at Yale became the first in the nation to start this study. Now many more are signing up. For information about the TrialNet studies at Vanderbilt, go to mc.vanderbilt.edu and search TrialNet. Vanderbilt students, faculty, and staff came together for a special tribute to those lost 10 years ago in the September 11th terrorist attacks. Welcome to this interfaith gathering of prayer, remembrance, and hope on this solemn National Day of Remembrance and Service. Together, we remember and honor those who were killed on September 11, 2001.
the believers are about a single brotherhood. So make peace and reconciliation between your two brothers and fear God that you may receive mercy. As for mortals, their days are like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. On this day, may the tears of despair be transformed into living streams of renewal. May the gentle and confident strength of compassionate faith transform grief and bitterness into hope and meaning and purpose. May Vanderbilt be a blessing in the world, sending forth faithful students who are committed peacemakers. And may the blessing of the source of light and life be upon us now and always. Let us go forth in peace. Amen. The symbol of life and hope and joy, if you please release your butterflies. Read the personal stories of Vanderbilt students, faculty, and staff who were in New York City and Washington during the attacks in a special feature on vanderbilt.edu slash vanderbiltview. How could studying the brain impact criminal law? Vanderbilt is leading a national research network to find out. With the help of an almost $5 million grant from the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation, Vanderbilt Professor of Law and Biology, Owen Jones, will run the MacArthur Research Network on Law and Neuroscience. Well, this is a great time to study the intersection of law and neuroscience because the law often, not always, cares about what people are thinking when they behave in bad ways. So, for example, in the context of homicide, it matters whether you're trying to kill someone or killed somebody by accident. Uh, and neuroscience, with its uh, tremendous advances in new technologies recently is opening new windows on how you can learn about the brain and how it functions and probably most spectacularly you can learn about the brain non-invasively for the first time in history. You can learn more about so the research the group is taking on at lawneuro.org. Hungry for more Vanderbilt research? Go to news.vanderbilt.edu research. For ViewCast, I'm Amy Wolfe.